Okay, so deriving the Kelvin equation, which tells us how the vapor pressure of this drop over here is going to be higher than the vapor pressure of liquid with a flat surface. And that's because the applause pressure is squishing this little droplet, increasing its chemical potential and causing it to, to vaporize more than it otherwise would. All right, in either case, we have uh, an equilibrium between the two phases. So we can write that the chemical potentials of the liquid and gas are equal. But we know that when we go from this case, we're going to increase the pressure. And so let's say that the pressure here is going to be P1. And the pressure over here is going to be P2. Now, in, in the case of the flat surface, we know the pressure has to be the same for the two phases. But here, we know there's a difference of the Laplace pressure. So we'll just say that this droplet over here is going to be P2 plus the, the Laplace pressure. So we know the Laplace pressure is just going to be the mean curvature times the surface tension. All right. So in this case, we can say that, uh, for, or for any phase, we can say that the change in chemical potential is going to be given by minus STT plus BDP. Now we're not changing the temperature in this problem, so the DT term goes to zero. And so for both chemical potentials, as we go from point A to point B over here, we're only looking at the changes in pressure. So we can say that the change in chemical potential for the liquid as we go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side has to be equal to the change in chemical potential of the gas. Well, let's write expressions for these. Well, in both cases, it's going to be VDP, but the more volumes of the two substances are different. So for the left-hand side, for the liquid, we can say we've got the more volume of the liquid times the infinitesimal change in pressure. And for the gas, the same thing. It's the more volume of the gas times the change in pressure. So if we integrate these two terms, we can actually get how the pressures change and therefore what the vapor pressure of this droplet is. What is P2? Okay, so we have to integrate these. When we look at the limits of integration here, We can see that for the liquid, we're going to start off at P1, and we're going to go to P2 plus the plus. Because we remember that the liquid is going to be the new vapor pressure plus it's being squeezed by the plus pressure. And that's the more volume of liquid times dp. For the gas, we're still starting off at p1, but now we're just going to p2. We don't have to deal with the Laplace pressure. We can replace these more volumes by assuming the more volume of the liquid is constant. Pull it outside the interval. And for the, oh, this should be a P2. Um, oh, this should be a P2 as well. Uh, for the other side, we can replace the more volume because the gas, we'll just use the ideal gas law. So the more volume will be RT over P. And we're going to go from P1 again, but this time to just P2. Okay, and we can integrate both sides. We can see what a, uh, just a difference here. We have P2 plus the Laplace pressure. Oops. Minus P1. And the right hand side we've got, we'll pull the RT out since temperature is constant. And then we'll just have a, a logarithm of P2 over P1. Now, at first, it looks like we have a difficulty because the thing we're looking for, P2, is on both sides. 
However, it turns out we can get rid of this through an approximation, and I'll show that on the next page. I grouped these two together, the P2 minus P1. Now notice we have two things added together here, and the question is, are they comparable? If the Laplace pressure is much greater than the difference between the normal vapor pressure and the new vapor pressure, well then we can ignore this term. In other words, we'll say that this difference is so small that it pales in comparison to that. We're going to make that assumption and then we'll test it at the end. So if we make that assumption, we are just left with the water volume of the liquid, the Laplace pressure, that's equal to RT log of P2 for P1. And at that point, we can solve for the new vapor pressure of P2. So we divide by RT and take an exponential. So we get P2 is equal to P1. And then we have an exponential that's proportional to the, uh, the argument of the exponential proportional to the Laplace pressure times the more volume of the liquid divided by RT. And this is called the Kelvin equation. So this tells us the vapor pressure of liquid droplets that have a positive curvature. So for instance, a spherical droplet.